hey, today what I would like to do is I want to look at when do we have, I'm going to look at this question, when do we have exact values for the Lambert W function? And that's supposed to the normal case where if we look at the Lambert W, typically we're going to have a, like a long decimal approximation and we want to get some nice exact values. And what we can do is utilize this formula over here on the right. And this formula is going to help us find some of these nice values. So we'll start with some really easy stuff, kind of obvious, but like if we have something like Lambert W of E, well, this can be just written as Lambert W1, E1, E to the one, and then we have the same coefficient and exponent. So this is just going to be one. We could look at Lambert W of zero. This can be expressed as zero e to the zero. And then again, same input output. So that's going to be value of zero. And of course we could do this kind of thing all day. We could have number w2 e to the two is going to be two or say e e to the e is just going to be e or pi e to the pi is going to be pi. We could go on and on. Staying along the same lines, we could look at this classic one. Lambert W of minus one over E. This just could be rewritten as minus one E to the minus one. And we get minus one. So that's pretty similar to what we just did before, but a little bit better. We could look at Lambert W E one plus E. E to the one plus E is we can just um, rewrite this as a product. So we'd have Lambert W e times e to the e, and that's actually one we just did like two seconds ago, and that's just e. How about Lambert W ln of 27? Interesting thing here, we can actually rewrite 27. Let's rewrite this as ln three cubed. And then with that exponent, we can move this to the front here. So we'll have Lambert W three ln three. But then we can rewrite our three. We have this formula where we can write anything with a bit, make a base E. So we can write it as E ln three. So Lambert W ln three E ln three. Notice now we have our same coefficient and exponent like our formula over here. And so this is just going to be ln three. In this case, there is just a formula that you can kind of remember, which is just going to be we have Lambert W A L N A. That's just going to be the same thing as L N A. This is a good one to know. And now for the main course, we have Lambert W minus pi over two. This one's interesting. So we want to use our formula over here, but we've got no E in here. Now, one thing to notice, this is kind of interesting. If we look at just what is this decimal, this is uh, pi over two is around 1.57. So this is gonna be minus 1.57. So looking at our graph of the Lambert W function, this graph on the right here, this represents our real values of the Lambert W function. And then we have our minus pi over two over here in the complex range. So this, what we're looking at, this value is gonna be complex. So then with that in mind, we're not even looking for a real value for this. And so with that in mind, we'll write, we'll take our minus sign, our minus one, and we can just write this as i times i because i times i is negative one. And then we have our pi over two. We can recall from Euler's formula, we have ei pi over two. This is gonna be the same thing as cosine pi over two plus i sine pi over two. But then cosine pi over two, this is just zero. And sine pi over two is just one. So this is the same thing as i. So then that's gonna allow us to rewrite one of these i's. We'll write this, take this first one and write that i like this, ei pi over two. Now writing i that way, we notice that now we match our coefficient and exponent. And so we know that this is actually gonna be equal to i pi over two. But because we're in the complex part of the Lambert W function, like we saw in the graph, everything out here is complex. There's gonna be, there's always gonna be an infinite amount of solutions that are complex for the Lambert W function. So we can actually go back and find another solution. 
So now going back to what we did here with this minus sign, we wrote our minus sign as i times i. Well, we also could do something really similar. We could write it as minus i times minus i, i over two. Right, so when you multiply that, that's still just i squared, which is just negative one. And then if we look at Euler's formula again for you know, the minus i pi over two, we get cosine minus pi over two, but for cosine, the minus value is the same. It's an even function, so we'll write it as pi over two. And then plus i sine pi over two. Oops, sorry, negative there. So then again, this piece is zero. This piece is negative one. And so we get our minus i. So we're doing really the exact same thing. We can take this and write it like this. But doing that, we're in the right form, to, the right position to use the Lambert W function again. And this is just going to return minus i pi over 2. So there's another complex solution. I have a bunch of problems of this type on my quiz Lambert W function. Provide a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.